everybody and welcome to another Christmas edition of Yoga Shorts. Today I have joining me Clara and Felix, my darling little sweethearts. Um, for today, if you want to have your kids join, hopefully a lot of you are at home and not working and um, enjoying the holidays, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, if you have a yoga block, that would be handy, as well as a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a belt or a house coat or robe belt or just a piece of long fabric will work as well. And then for today, we're going to work on a little bit of hips and possibly a little bit of range of motion. We'll see what these kids are up to today. So to start off, I'll get everybody to go on all fours, hands and knees. And I'll demonstrate from the side. So we're going to take the right leg and we're going to take it up and over the left. Good. And then we're going to separate our feet out nice and wide. And then we're going to sit in between that space. Now, if that's difficult for a lot of adults, it is. Feel free to take a block or two or a couple of books and stack them underneath your hip bones. We want to make sure that both sits bones, um, the bones that we sit on in our bum, can be flat to the ground. And then we're going to do some of our pranayama, some of our breathing. So closing the eyes, start to breathe, inhaling and exhaling, breathing into the hips that are starting to release and relax, hopefully in this pose. If they're tight, even if you can sit down with both of your hips on the ground, if it feels uncomfortable, maybe elevate the surface a little bit with a book or a block, and that will help relieve the discomfort, and it will still give you the hip opening. Breathing in deeply and evenly. Try to relax your belly so that it billows out on the exhales, and your breaths start to become a little bit longer and a little bit more relaxed with each breath. Feel the space between the ribs increase in size every time you inhale. And then with each exhale, notice yourself relaxing a little bit further down into the mat and into the sits bones, having your hips open a little bit wider. Breathing in. Breathing out. If you can, and you're not suffering with a Christmas cold, see if you can inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Continue to breathe, inhaling and exhaling relaxing a little bit deeper with each breath, allowing your hips to open and relax a little bit more with each breath. Now we're gonna do some breathing to counting. You guys think you can do that? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to inhale for six, we're going to hold at the top for six, we're going to exhale for six, and hold at the bottom for six. Uh, in my other videos, this is also called box breathing. So everybody inhale, exhale fully, and then we're going to inhale for six, five, four, keep inhaling, three, two, one, hold it there, breathe in a little bit more, three, two, one, and very slowly exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale a little bit more down at the bottom. Hold it there for five, four, three, two, one, and then inhaling again for six, five, four, three, two, one. All the way at the top, holding there. We're halfway, and then exhaling for six, five, four, three, 
two, one, and then continue to breathe normally on your own, inhaling and exhaling, remembering to release the belly, allow it to billow out as you breathe, creating space for all of your organs. As your lungs fill up with air, it pushes everything down and it needs space to go into in order for you to breathe big. Keeping the forehead relaxed and the shoulders relaxed. Try to relax through the hips one last time. Done. We're going to come forward onto all fours. We're going to take the right leg and we're going to uncross it from the left. If you have blocks behind you, you can just adjust them. And then we're going to take our strap and put it beside us so it's somewhere easy for us to grab. So just beside us, close to our hips, is a good place. And then we're going to come onto all fours. If you used blocks for the first Gomukhasana or hip opener, you'll want to put those blocks so that you can reach them easily. We're going to take the left leg forward and cross it over the right this time. So whatever one you did last time, use the opposite one this time. Take your feet nice and wide. Take your feet away from each other. And then we're going to go ahead and sit back onto the mat or the blocks. Make sure that both sits bones can sit on the floor. Otherwise, you'll want to take a block underneath you. One side is often different than the other, so you might find that if you needed blocks on the opposite side, you may not on this side, or likewise for this one. You might need blocks if you didn't before. And then we're going to take our strap, and we're going to open it up, holding onto two ends, nice and wide. And I'm going to come a little bit forward on this one so we don't end up knocking each other. So at home, again, if you have a wide piece of fabric or a yoga strap, now's the time to grab that. We want our knees to be stacked, feet to remain wide, continue to breathe in. Maybe not so wide, Felix, just a little bit, a little bit wider than your shoulders. So bring your hands closer together on the strap. Bring your hands closer together on the strap. There you go. Okay. So we'll try it this way. Felix, maybe if you come forward where I am on your mat, to the middle of your mat. There we go. And then can you take your, your knees back where you were before? So come into all fours. Take the left leg over the right. <laughs> if you're at home, you're probably also running into these difficulties as well. Good. Yep. And then take your feet wide. Good, how's that feel? Is that okay? All right, now we're gonna take the arms up and over and you'll find out right away if you've taken your hands too close or too far. If it feels really easy, you'll wanna take your hands closer together on the strap. If it feels too difficult or you can't get your arms all over without bending an elbow, then you'll need to take them a little bit wider. So on the inhale, we're gonna come up and over. And on the exhale, we take it back behind us. Inhale to come up, keeping your arms nice and straight. Exhale to come down. Inhale to take the arms up. Well done. Exhale to take them behind you. Inhale to take the arms up. Exhale to take the strap down towards the floor. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Do you guys feel like you're getting a stretch? If you feel like this is too easy at home, walk your hands in more on the strap, lessening the length. If you feel like it's too hard, you can take them wider. We're gonna go for five more times. Challenge yourself, good job Felix. We'll see if you can do it that way. So inhaling up, exhaling down. Oh, he did it. Inhaling up, exhaling down. If your hips are starting to speak to you and you're needing a little bit more, maybe go down a little bit further. If you're needing a little bit less, if they're feeling too tight, sit on a block or a book. Inhale, taking the arms up. Slowly exhale, take them back. We're engaging the muscles. That's why we're moving so slowly. We're trying not to use momentum. Inhaling up. Exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down. 
one more. Inhaling up, exhaling down, and return. Inhaling on the way up and exhaling on the way down. And then go ahead and take yourself forward onto all fours, uncrossing your legs. Coming back onto your mat. You can go ahead and wiggle through the hips. We've taken them in a seated posture with a hip opening for quite a while. Take your hands forward, about two hand widths ahead of where your palms are right now. Tuck your toes in the back and lift your hips up towards the ceiling to come into your first down dog. You can start to bicycle through the knees, bending them. And then tilt your tailbone up towards the ceiling and press your breastbone, press your chest towards the floor. Your heels don't have to touch the ground. Breathing here. You can wiggle your hips side to side if that makes them feel better. We're gonna come up to tiptoe, slight bend in the knees, and then take your feet forward between your hands, however they get there. Nice, inhale to a flat back, looking down at the floor in front of you. Exhale and fold, and then inhale and slowly roll up through your spine. Sweep the arms up, exhale the hands down. Inhale, sweep the arms up, exhale, swan dive down. You can bend the knees here if that makes you feel better. Inhale to a flat back, exhale, plant the hands, step back into high plank. Put the shoulders right over your wrists. And then keeping the elbows in, lower all the way down to the ground. Roll the shoulders back to inhale the chest up to Bhujangasana or Cobra Pose. Exhale down. And then you can either push into down dog through all fours or you can engage your core and push up like a big push up through plank. Well done into down dog. We're going to set our feet down on the ground and I'm going to face this way just so that people can see a little bit better. We're going to start with the right hip and we're going to take the hip out and up and back. So it's like we're drawing big circles with our knee. So take it to the side and then back behind you. Take it to the side, back behind you. While you're doing this, you want to make sure that your shoulders don't move. They stay in one place. Don't wiggle your shoulders. Keep doing it. So make smaller circles with your knee and keep your shoulders steady. If it helps to put a block on your shoulders to maintain that stability, you can do that and it'll give you feedback. Breathing here as you do hip circles. And now we're going to take the knee next to the opposite knee. And this time we're going to go back and then circle around. So we're doing circles in the opposite direction. Breathing here. Good. Set that knee down. We're going to pick up the opposite knee. We're going to take it up and over to the side and back. Keep your shoulders nice and still. Try to keep the knee bent at a 90 degree angle. So we're not working through the whole leg. We're not extending the leg to get range of movement. All we're doing is working into the hip. Good job. Do you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Set the knee next to the other one. And then we're going to take it back and reverse the circle. So we go back with the knee and then around. Good job. Go ahead and take it down. Maybe wiggle it out. Okay. Now we're going to continue working on the shoulders. And if you've been watching uh, my YouTube channel, the last couple of videos, we've been working on shoulder mobility. So we're just going to add to that this class. We're going to take the blocks 
and we're going to do some teacups. The kids haven't done this before, so I'm going to demonstrate for them. So if you guys just want to watch first, we're going to take the block out and up at about a 45 degree angle from my spine, so my arm is at a 45 degree angle from the rest of my torso. We're going to take the block towards our chest, spin it under our belly, take it back, lift it up, and squeeze it in. And then we're going to reverse, taking the arm out, spinning it under the belly, towards the chest, up and out at a 45 degree angle. You guys ready to try? And it's okay if you drop the block, that's all right. So take the arm out and up, and then down through the chest, spin it around the belly, <laughs> and towards the back. Let's try one more time. Take it out towards the side. Let's all start in the same place so that we have an easier time following instruction. Take it out towards the front, Felix. Well, we're gonna do it together. These blocks are really big for little people, <laughs> You're doing a great job. So take it towards your chest, and then take your elbow out towards the side. Spin it under your belly. Well done. Straighten the arm back. Lift it up. Hug it in. Take it out towards the side. Take it down and under your belly. Spin it around through the chest, up and forward. Good. Go ahead and put it down. We're going to switch sides. All right, I'm gonna grab, I happen to have a book here that I'm gonna grab for Felix, because the block is just too big. Let's take Jurassic Park and see if that works better for you. And at home, if you wanna modify, you can do this even without blocks. Blocks help you keep the arm a little bit more externally rotated. So, out into the side, well done. Bring it in towards the chest, Spin it under the belly, take it around and back, straightening the arm, push it up, hug it in. Take it out to the side, take it under the belly, spin it around, through the chest, and up. Well done. One more time, take it in towards the chest, around the belly, towards the back, straighten the arm, oh, we were so close. Take it up, hug it in. Try to keep the rest of your body facing forward. <laughs> and then take it out to the side, spin it around your belly. Take it up and send it out. Go ahead and put it down. Good job, you guys. We can wiggle out the shoulders. All right, let's come on to all fours. So we're gonna work on stabilizing through the shoulders and the hips in these next couple moves. And I'm gonna place some blocks on my kids' shoulders to see if they can maintain stability. Actually, because these are so large, I think I might put them on their hips. So try to keep the blocks from moving. If you're at home, you can try the same thing. So we're just going to inhale the right arm up with the thumb towards the ceiling. Try to keep that block from moving and then take it back down. And then use the opposite arm. Try to keep your shoulders nice and straight. Take the thumb towards the ceiling. Nice straight arm and then take it down. Take the right hand with the thumb towards the ceiling up and take it down. And then take the left hand up towards the ceiling with the thumb up. And then take it down. Press into both of your hands. Make sure that your wrists are under your shoulders. We're going to do the right leg. If lifting the leg off of the ground is too hard, you can keep the toe tucked and just lift without taking the toe off the ground. On an inhale, we're going to take the right leg up to a straight position, try to keep the hips stable so the block doesn't move or fall off. And then take the right leg back down. And then the left leg we're gonna take up. Nicely done. And take it back down. Nice try, just go ahead and grab your block and put it back on if it falls. 
Now we're going to do both the right arm and the left leg at the same time. So we're going to build and we're going to make it a little bit harder each time. Are you ready? Do you want me to help you with the block? You got it. Okay, so inhale the right arm and the left leg. Breathe in here. Exhale them down. Inhale up the opposite side. Left arm, right leg. Keeping the block where it is. Keep the shoulders and hips nice and stable. Exhale down. Inhale, take the right arm up and the left leg up. Taking the thumb towards the ceiling. Try to set your gaze about a foot in front of your hands. And then we're going to take the right arm and the left leg out to the side. Breathing here. Well done. Back towards midline. <laughs> and down. Go ahead and adjust your blocks. Are we ready? Opposite side. Left arm, right leg. All the way up. And Felix is modifying by just taking the legs out of the equation a little bit. Are you going for it? Nice. <laughs> and then take it out to the side for those of you at home. <laughs> Try to keep the thumb up towards the ceiling so we're getting a nice external rotation in this front shoulder. And try to keep this uh, alternate shoulder from falling in or doing anything funny. Move it towards midline and then come on back down. All right, if you guys wanna try something a little bit harder, we'll take it up a level. It'll be different. I think you guys will be better at this next one. <laughs> Felix is saying no. So for those of you at home that are up for the challenge, we're gonna try it. So we're at the top of our mats at this point. We're gonna tuck our toes, lift our knees, just a couple of inches off the ground. Try to keep the block on your hips, which are nice and stable. We're gonna walk ourselves back towards the back of our mat. Trying to keep our shoulders and our hips completely stable. So walk your feet back too, Clara. Try to move your feet and your hands at the same time. When you hit the back of your mat, go ahead and put your knees down and take a break for a moment. Start to breathe. Good. Take your knees down. For this one, I'm going to help Felix a little bit. Okay, so put this part of your back down a little bit, just a little bit, lift this up, lift this up, just this part, yeah, okay, now everybody on the count of three, we're going to lift the knees up, ready, one, two, three, lift them up just a few inches, take it down a bit lower Felix, really engage your core here, and then we're going to try to move the alternate hand and the opposite leg at the same time. So go ahead and move, walking forward towards the front of your mat. Try to keep your hips nice and stable. The smaller the movements, the easier it'll be to keep your hips and shoulders stable. Walking forward, walking forward, walking forward. Try to keep your knees hovering above the mat just like you were. So it's almost like an army crawl when you were little, Felix. Good, Clara. Try to keep your knees nice and low so your hips stay low. Yeah, so your hips can stay stable. Clara's got it. This takes a lot of work. For those of you at home that are feeling frustrated, this type of thing can take a while to do. So let's practice without the blocks, because those can sometimes be frustrating, but they provide good feedback. Let's start at the top of our mats. Tuck your toes, lift your knees just a couple of inches, and this time I want you to look at your knees in relation to the ground and I want you to keep them where they are in relation to the ground. So don't have them lift up more than where they are or set them down. Try to keep them exactly where they are, just hovering from the ground. And then we're going to start to move back. Better. Without having to focus on the block and giving yourself something else to focus on, sometimes it's a little bit easier for your mind. Once you come back, we're going to start to move forward. Really engaging through your torso and your core. And 
and then set yourself down when you're at the top of the mat. Well done. Felix, were you able to do it where you kept your knees just hovering from the mat? Yeah? Kinda. Clara? Kinda? Good. Hopefully those of you at home were able to do that too. All right. Let's come to stand at the top of our mat. And then let's inhale, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, swan dive or prayer down. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back into high plank. And then we're going to stay here for just a second. Try to make sure that your shoulders are over your wrists. So Felix, can you take your shoulders forward a little bit, but leave your hands where they are? Better, yes. And then we're going to take our right foot and tap the edge of our mat. And then bring it in and take your left foot and tap the edge of your mat on the left. And take it in, tap your right, take it in, tap your left, take it in. One more time on each side. Tap your right, take it in, tap your left, take it in. Now look down towards your hands and then I want you to put your elbows underneath your shoulders. So we're in forearm plank. So Clara, get your hips down a little bit lower. Yeah, better. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Take your right foot and tap the edge of your mat. And take it in. Left foot, tap the edge of your mat. Take it in. And then we're gonna walk our toes towards our elbows. So we're as high as we can go. Try to keep pushing your breastbone, your chest towards the floor. Breathing here. And then go ahead and bend through the knees. Take your arms long and sit back into child's pose. When you come into forearm plank, we want to try to keep the arms in sort of an 11. So both of the forearms are parallel to one another. And we really want to try to engage through the shoulders. And then when we come up into dolphin pose, lifting the hips, we want to make sure that we're not coming forward with our shoulders. The shoulders are continuing to press back as we bring our chest towards the floor. Doesn't matter how far our feet are from the shoulders, as long as our shoulders are continuing to work. You guys can just rest in child's pose. So go ahead and tuck back, put your head on the ground, put your hips back onto your heels, and just rest here for a few minutes. Breathing and relaxing, allowing your forehead to be on the floor. Slow your breath down. Well done. Feel the belly against your thighs as you breathe. You did some good core work, you guys. Open up through the shoulders and the hips. All right, come on up on the hands and knees. We're gonna take the palms forward one or two lengths ahead of our knees, tuck the toes, and then lift the hips into down dog. We're going to take the right leg and we're going to bend the knee and we're going to do hip circles through the right knee. Taking the knee back and lifting it forward or whichever way you're doing your circles. Try to keep pressing your chest towards the floor. Your gaze should be down just below your nose. And then we're going to go the opposite way with the circles. And then come up to your left tiptoe. Take that right foot forward between your hands. On the way up, we're going to grab the strap. Do you guys have your straps close to you? I think that one's yours. All right. So we're in a lunge. We're grabbing our strap, which is right at the edge of our mat. Why don't you do this? Yeah. And we're going to lift up into high lunge. Good job, Felix. Take your right foot forward. Right foot forward. Nice. Left foot back. Bend through the front knee. Sink the hips down, pull the right hip back so you're squaring your hips towards the front of your mat. 
We're going to exhale, taking the strap back. Inhale, take the strap forward. And then go ahead and take it towards the ground in front of you. We're going to step the change. So put your weight into your hands. Step the right foot back. Take the left foot forward. Keep your hips nice and low. Grab the strap. Inhale yourself up. Exhale the strap down. Inhale the strap up. Check in with your lunge. Make sure that this front knee is pointed towards the pinky toe and your hips are square towards the front edge of your mat. Go ahead and exhale it down. We're going to step back. And we're going to sit back. We are out of time for today. So we're going to take Shavasana now. So everybody go ahead and lie down on your backs. Get yourself nice and comfortable. You can move props and stuff out of the way. For those of you at home, I will talk you through Shavasana so the next YouTube video doesn't start up and bother you. We'll just be here for a couple of minutes. So closing the eyes. Allow yourself to fully relax into your mat. Feel the weight of gravity pull you in towards its center. With each breath, allow yourself to go deeper into relaxation. Allowing your belly to fully relax on the inhales. Exhaling easily. Allow your body, your hips and your shoulders, everything that you just worked to fully rest. If thoughts arise in your mind, acknowledge them and then allow them to dissipate, returning your attention to the inhaling and the exhaling.
Breathing in, a deep inhale. Start to bring awareness back into your body. Maybe wiggling through your fingers and your toes. Maybe taking a big stretch up overhead. When you're ready, roll onto your right hand side and take a couple of breaths there. And then as you're ready, push up with your arms to put yourself into a seated position. The light in me honors and acknowledges the light in each of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.